Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is just kind of go through some simple steps of what you need to know uh, to be able to solve logarithmic expressions. Uh, the first thing we have to know is how to condense. So if you don't know how to condense or you haven't uh, learned that, please make sure you go through the process of condensing because that's going to be extremely important, especially not only um, not just not for solving like the simpler or basic uh, logarithmic equations, but the more complicated ones, you have to know the properties of logarithms to apply when condensing. The next thing is that's going to become very important is rewriting it in exponential form. I think this is one of the most e or the one of the easiest ways to solve for logarithmic equations. And if you just have log base b of x equals y. To a lot of times to solve for our missing variable, all we need to do is rewrite this in exponential form, which would be b to the y equals x. Then we don't have a logarithm. We don't have to think about what does this log say? What does you know? What does all this mean? Forget about it. All we need to worry about is what is our missing variable and how are we going to find it. Uh, now obviously the case could probably that still could be tough if if that's our y. Then we'd actually probably have to use our calculator to evaluate that. But that's another story. The next thing is the one-to-one -one property. I love the one-to-one -one property because when you use, talking about the one-to-one -one property for exponents, it's very obvious for students to say, oh, well, x has to equal 5, right? Bam, bam. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's the same thing for logarithms. So if I have log base 3 of x is equal to log base 3 of 5, x equals 5, right? So it's OK if you have a logarithm on both sides. Apply the one-to-one um, -one property. but before you do that one to one property, you have to make sure you condense. All right. If there is, um, you know, for instance, a plus five over here or something, you cannot apply the one to one property. It's only when a logarithm equals another logarithm. So we got to make sure we have that in, in order. The next thing is to check your solutions. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the parent graph of a logarithm looks like this. All right? It does not look like a quadratic. If you have two solutions, one of those solutions is going to be extraneous. Um, there's only one solution, and more often than not, it's going to be positive. So if you have a negative solution, very, very carefully check that solution compared to the positive solution. Um, however, more likely than not, the negative solution will be extraneous. But please check it, um, even though most likely you, know, you can see that it's always positive. But it could have a transformation going to the left. But when you have two solutions, make sure you check them. Check for extraneous solutions. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is your steps of what you need to know to solve for logarithmic equations. Thanks.